Uh, good, good morning to all the panelists, judges, and the fellow presenters. So I'll be presenting a case presentation on scleral foreign body mimicking as episcleritis, which presented as a clinical dilemma to us. So I'm the presenting author. There are no financial disclosures. So we are going to. I'm going to present two cases which of deeply buried scleral foreign body mimicking episcleritis. So in the first case, a 28-year-old male patient uh, presented to us with redness in the uh, in his left eye associated with dizziness for the past one month. Visual acuity in both eyes was 66. The pupillary reactions were round. The pupils were round, regular, and equally reacting. On examination, we found a well-defined subconjunctival nodule measuring 5 mm into 3 mm with pigmentation in the superior temporal quadrant in the left eye. Uh, AC was quiet and lens was clear. Rest of the examination was within normal limits. Right eye and TA segment evaluation was within normal limits. The fundus in both eyes was within normal limits. So on the basis of examination, we made a suspicion of foreign body and an X-ray orbit was done. The X-ray revealed a linear opacity in the superior nasal quadrant. On uh, detailed history taking, further probing the patient, the patient gave a history of foreign body falling in his eye one month ago. So CT scan was done to uh, confirm the diagnosis and foreign body was confirmed lying in the superficial ocular ports in the superior nasal quadrant. Globe exploration was done and the foreign body removal was done under local anesthesia. Intraoperatively, we found an iron foreign body, iron piece embedded uh, deep in the sclera, not perforating it. It was uh, removed and scleral suturing was done with 80 nylon sutures. Post-operatively, the patient was given topical steroids and antibiotics and the follow-up was uneventful. This was the size, like this bigger foreign body was found. In a similar case, uh, in the second case, a 13-year-old male presented a boy presented with a localized nodular swelling uh, in the left eye associated with pain since last one month. Similar to the previous case, vision was unaffected, pupils were round, regular and equally reacting. And on examination, it showed a painless paralimbal swelling temporarily at three o'clock in the left eye. The anterior segment uh, AC was quiet at clear lens. Rest of the anterior segment examination was within normal limits. Right eye examination was normal and fundus was within normal limits. So similarly, um, in this case also, we made a first a provisional diagnosis of nodular episcleritis. The patient was started on low dose tropical steroids. Uh, the pay, all the investigations like CBC, chest X-ray and Montux were done to rule out tubercular infection given the age group of the child. And But however, no relief of symptoms was observed even after two weeks of topical steroids. And all the investigations came out to be normal. So we made a, a suspicion of a foreign body. So we did a UBM for this child. It revealed a subconjunctival hypoechoic lesion. Uh, with hyperechoic center in the outer scleral layers, which was suggestive of either a foreign body or a cystic circus cyst. So CCT brain was done to rule out any neurocystic circosis, which did not uh, uh, reveal anything. And on detailed history taking for the probing the patient, the patient gave a history of trauma with a pencil one month ago. So globe exploration was done under local anesthesia and from the scleral layers, a foreign intraoperatively, a wooden foreign body was found embedded deep in the sclera. And then scleral suturing was done. Postoperatively, patient was given topical steroids and antibiotics, and follow-up was uneventful. So uh, episcleritis usually presents as diffuse redness. The differential diagnosis include conjunctivitis, plectin, foreign body granuloma, scleritis, etc. Any redness in a patient which is not resolving with topical steroids should always raise a suspicion of any local insult, any trauma, or any ocular or systemic disease. So these cases, they highlight the importance of thorough history taking and the retrograde uh, revision of the diagnosis and treatment, especially if the patient's response to the treatment is unsatisfactory. On, in both the cases, when we, in the first presentation, the patient negated any history of trauma. However, when the patient did not have any resolution of symptoms, we further probed the patient. Also, a meticulous slit lamp examination is very important in directing a localized sign like this toward, uh, with multiple differential diagnosis towards the correct treatment. And a foreign body in eye can easily mimic and present as a piece like this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, fine. Very good. 
so on what ground you suspect it it may it may not be epistleritis it may be it may be other so uh, in the case of a child uh, he was a school going child and the mother gave a history that there had a there was a fight between two children like that and in case of the adult uh, his profession uh, he was a welder by profession so uh, like that is why i have emphasized that history taking is very important about what is the uh, person's profession what is the age group has there been any uh, local insult like that is why and also on the slit lamp examination the appearance of the nodule was very specific and we could see that there is something beneath the transparent layers of the conjunctiva and the the sclera so that's it which is the investigation of choice in such cases the ct is yeah. ct is the investigation of choice in cases of uh, metallic foreign body and ultrasound uh, that in uh, non metallic ultrasound is the uh, investigation of choice but in that uh, x ray was initially done because uh, the patient presented an emergency so at the at night time so that is why like the ancillary investigation x ray only was available in the government setup